everybody. I thought I would do a different video today. I'm going to do a little bit of a talk about um, the Spanish horses that I have in for training and usually what sort of steps I take to get them more sort of uh, ready for their UK homes if they go to the UK. Uh, obviously I do sell to other parts but um, mostly obviously the horses that I have are being sold for dressage so it's important to get them out of the Doma Vecuera tack and into the English tack so that obviously it's not a shock and that they um, know how to go properly you know from the correct sort of principles leg to hand and you know with a nice sort of bit in their mouth really so that's the biggest thing of my work that is what I have to spend the most time on um, you know getting them used to the ways of things so I thought I would just do a video showing an example with my mare Ferrandola she is a lovely eight-year-old mare that I've had now for a couple of months. Um, she's a prime example of sometimes how they arrive um, from their past lives in the sort of Doma Vaquera or Romeria uh, sort of areas that they might have been used in. So um, she's lovely, absolutely the most genuine mare I think I've ever met. Very, very sweet, very eager to please. But she had a lot of issues with sort of accepting um, the new style of riding. It would make her very upset just from the remnants really of what she'd experienced in the past with the horrible Soretta and the Dom of Aquera bit that she was used to being ridden in. Um, sometimes as well, you know, this is nothing against the Spanish. Um, they have their ways and their culture and I totally respect it. Um, but, you know, a lot of the horses that are very, very honest, very easy, they do get a little bit um, exploited because of that. You know, in my opinion, they tend to become uh, very... Um, sort of they just hold on to it all um, whatever you want to do with them you know they they just sort of take it um, whether they like it or not and that's not beat, beaten into them certainly not in Ferrandola's case she had a lovely owner who was very very fond of her um, but just sometimes a little bit of ignorance or how they are um, you know in their culture the way that they just sort of you know don't do a lot of work with them and then they sort of expect them to kind of be tacked up and then go out for these amazing rides and you know to the sort of fiestas and things like that so you know these horses are having to sort of just toe the line basically um, and they've not really got any other choice so you know I just like to bring everything down to basics initially um, and that starts with removing the sort of whole leather wear over the nose over the mouth everything um, and putting everything back to basics so she was ridden um, quite a lot in the sort of plastic rubber type bits. Um, I do that with these ones that come a little bit more tense in the mouth so that they can obviously learn to sort of unlock their jaw and just sort of mouth a bit and, and sort of not fear it anymore, you know, not feel uncomfortable with the pressure. And obviously um, I had her teeth done before we started that sort of work um, and then sort of transitioned on to different bits and um you know making sure that she was comfortable sort of in the mouth um before i sort of started any serious work with her now the bit that i like to use is a good transition bit this is a bomber happy tongue which provides a lot of relief over the tongue area obviously it's got the sweet eye it's not very clean sorry about that uh, but um you know it's very much sort of a sort of tongue relief also, if you look here, this is an example. It's not mine. It actually belongs to my partner. I'd never ridden in one. <laughs> but um, this is the sort of typical, or well, one of the types of the sort of Doma Vaquera bridles that people like to use. And as you can see, it's pretty fierce. But, you know, if you put it down to basics, this port is obviously very much what you would find on like a double bridle Weymouth. Um, this sort of goes up and down which is just horrible, isn't it? I mean, it's just, and it's rusty and all sorts. And then they do the chain, obviously the, the link of the chain really quite tight. So that provides a huge amount of sort of pole pressure when they're using that. However, they don't quite often ride too strongly off this bit. I don't really know what that bit's for, to be honest with you. But anyway, probably it's just to hold the sort of structure of the thing sort of together. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, my partner, when he rides, he's not a... A nasty person this is the serretta and as you can see this part here if it focuses this part here has been covered now underneath that leather you can see some pretty nasty serrations and that is the uh, serretta 
like serrated knife, I guess. That's what I kind of how I was learning it when I learned Spanish. But this has been uh, padded, obviously, so that it can't cut their nose. Now, anybody that has imported a horse or, you know, seen some of my horses close up, you will see that they, some horses have got slight scarring from that. And I've seen it range from just a few little marks to quite honestly open wounds um and i absolutely i mean this is the first thing that i just found absolutely abhorrent um in the sort of the way that the spanish ride but again not saying anything not slagging them off or anything it's just my opinion i don't like it i would never use it and part of my work is to you know hopefully send these horses to better places where these sort of things are a distant memory in terms of their ridden and working life and this part of the bridle is called the mosquero, and that's the bit that you'll see kind of whizzing back and forth, like the fly fringe. And a lot of people, when I'm selling my horses, they ask me, why is their forelock cut? Now, this is sort of biggest reason, uh, because this is kind of the fly fringe, if you like. So obviously, if they have that big, long Andalusian mane underneath it, it's going to get very hot. It's going to be in the way. It doesn't look neat and tidy. And in the world of sort of Dom of Aquera, it's usual to actually cut to the forelock, which gives this, you know, a lot more sort of room and sort of finesse, really. Um, apart from that, you know, obviously, um, you know, I just let the forelocks grow out and it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, but yeah, this is a standard sort of bridle that people would sort of use out here. These shanks range from long and, you know, horrible to sort of more shorter ones. Um, so yeah, and then that, that's just like a, a normal kind of cavus and nose band. But then as I said, this would go on top and it's these pointy bits here that can sometimes be really long. And obviously, the longer they are, the more kind of downward force you have on the nose. Um, this bit itself is really quite heavy, um, which is, again, you know, another reason why they can sometimes come here. Um, and, you know, you, you just feel that they are so closed in in the mouth. It really, really uncomfortable. So, um, you know, that is the worst kind of bit, really. The saddle sort of stuff you can kind of get, you can cope with, can't you? Because, you know, a saddle, it's just like a massive Western type saddle, really. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's not comfortable. It's not very... Um, conducive to a relaxed and nicely going horse so that is the biggest thing that I face in when I take on all my horses some have been ridden in English uh, tack which obviously helps because they felt you know the, the, the bridles as they are um, I usually take everything back I take the nose bands off um, you know and everything and just ride very very softly initially um, some get over it easier than others the older horses tend to take more time in taking the bit a little bit more forward and down so that's a quite a big job is to also get them stretching because they don't want to do that they've been so used to the pressure there that they just sort of stick the nose back and um, go along and it looks very pretty and lovely but obviously it's not correct in the world of dressage so that is the biggest thing getting the bits out of them getting them lunging you know nicely so that they're really confident in going forward by themselves before even there's a rider on board and then I will start to introduce um, you know sort of playing with the contact gently with a rubber bit then moving on to what I call my transition bit, as you saw, and then going on to just a normal sort of snaffle, usually with the little locket um, in the middle there, uh, so that you have a little bit more sort of, you know, detail on the tongue once they're more confident. So that's the biggest thing I would say. Obviously, Ferrandula has been, you know, a little bit more tense than others. And I think that's down to the fact that she was just so good natured, so easy that, you know, they, they did things like put another lady on with a bit of a insert a photo of them actually you know riding with two people on board and you know she just had to put up with a lot of things really and you know it's not coming from a place of harm every person I've met in Spain has never been you know sort of wanting to hurt the horses sometimes it's just a little bit of ignorance or just the culture that gets in the way of um, what I feel is a lovely relaxed sort of mare um, and in Ferrandola's case it's just taken her a little while to sort of get used to the the mouthing of the bit searching the contact trusting the contact and just being happy in her work knowing that there's no restriction pain pressure um, anymore coming from that sort of direction.
So this was her back in March. Um, you can see that the walk's quite choppy, quite jumpy, and that I'm making very small corrections just to bring her back a little on the spot, just to slow her down, a little bit of pressure in the mouth, and then releasing as soon as she gives me that. So she learns that the pressure's not there all the time. Um, and just, you know, trying to get her at the moment, you know, she's bobbing up and down, the contact's very sort of unlevel, but just sort of letting her know that she doesn't have to go around 100 miles an hour and that it's quite acceptable just to stay and walk and, and just to take in the lovely view. Um, I could hardly touch her in the mouth in these days, but, um, you know, now I'm getting a lot better. I can ride with my leg on. And you can see the same sort of thing goes for the trot, very sort of sewing machine trot, as I like to call it occasional sort of coming up against the hand I'm just trying to keep my hands really soft and in the place at this point because there's no point in trying to sort of fight her or or be hard with her so a little bit of transition there just to get her to just come back to me in a nice way from my knee and thigh and from a little bit of an aid there from the seat giving all the time I think you could see there that I was just giving the inside rein so that she just hopefully would soften around the inside bend slightly so that we could start to just get some general suppleness and looseness into the work which is obviously what she found really really difficult and here we have a clip from about three weeks ago so you can see the walk at least is a little bit slower a um, little bit more sort of ground covering she's a little bit closer to tracking up uh, still a little bit of a sort of head tossing and stuff but some of that uh, to be honest with you is down to a lot of the flies at the moment and the heat um, but yeah very much improved uh, the trot as you can see it's you know obviously she's got quite elevated sort of um, action anyway but she's a lot more um, through and sort of looks more supple a little nice swinging back and forth of the tail there and she's just a lot more in the rhythm she's a little bit more out in the nose without being quite so guarded here you can see I just moving her into an outside flexion and then I'll swing her gently back to an inside flexion on this part of the circle to just help keep those shoulders and the pole and everything really nice and soft so that the hind leg can come through and she can confidently go forward with the momentum rather than sort of in up and down in the itty bitty trot. So I'm really pleased with her, much, much better. Obviously, you know, long way to go, but, you know, they've all got their training issues and I've got no doubt that um, she will just go from strength to strength now this tension is away. I hope you've enjoyed this little video and insight into what I do. And if there's anything that people would like to see or know, then please do let me know. And I'll be happy to do some more videos on this topic or any other topics to do with training the Spanish horse. Um, I would like to sort of point out that um, this video is just my opinions and my experiences. I'm sure uh, other people would have different things to say, but this is what I've experienced and this is sort of the current theme that I've had over the sort of eight years of me being out here. Um, I'd like to also just sort of say that, you know, I hope that I also bring a, quite a unique service to people buying horses from me because, you know, there isn't that many um, riders of my level out here that are actually, um, you know, training the horses and preparing them for what lies ahead. Um, obviously, if you're buying from a Spanish rider or a dealer, then you are sort of very much getting the rawness of a Spanish horse of how it's been managed and trained out here. I hopefully hopefully bridge the gap and um, you know do quite a lot of training from my side from my uh, perspective and from my skill set to enable that the horses go on to their new homes um, nicely trained with hopefully good basics and are ready for whatever their new owners want to do with them really. Thanks very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you very soon for a brand new video.